This is Jim Amter, Van Onnen Company, Alexandria, Minnesota, but they're closing grain and livestock comments for October 27th, 2017. Corn market on the day here, down one and three quarters to two cents. Soybeans up three to four. Kansas City wheat down three to four. Minneapolis wheat down four to five. Chicago wheat down four to five. On the week, the corn market was up four and a quarter. The bean market down three and a half. The Chicago wheat up one and a quarter, Minneapolis up five and three quarters, and Kansas City up two and a half. Main focus here this week has been the dollar index. U.S. dollar index up another 34 to 40 ticks for much of the day, that after being up nearly 80 to 90 ticks yesterday. And what you're looking at is a circumstance here where the South American producer is loving the situation where the dollar strengthens, the real is dropping to some degree and bringing a far better selling opportunity for the 20 million metric tons of forecasts that old crop they're holding and also for the outlook of planting new crop soybeans here as we work ahead. Also looking at circumstances where Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso de Sol, looking at far better rain opportunities here over the next two weeks. That's adding pressure to the beans, while the southern areas of Brazil are actually getting too much rain. So we're kind of flipping the story as to the focal points, and we're left chopping in this range with corn hovering around this 350 mark, soybeans right around this 975, 200 day moving average, and the wheat market stuck in a rut here around 615 Minneapolis. As we look to next week, what are the main focal points? You know, we need to be attentive to these carries in the market. It's, uh, they're very good. It's been some time since we've seen corn carry out to over 30 cents in the bean one from uh, November to March out to the tune of uh, 20 and a half, 21 cents. So good opportunities. What does that mean? How do you capitalize on them? You look for small rally opportunities and then try to get out there in the deferred. Too many times we've seen people take advantage of uh, five cent DP per month, put it on there, and they get here six months down the road and says, hey, I didn't add anything. Well, if you don't step in on rallies and look to capitalize on those opportunities, in many circumstances, you don't get those. So be very attentive to that. That, I think, is really the focal place, point, as well as watching this dollar index for any direction there. The stronger the dollar gets, typically exports fall off a little bit. And with us tracking behind in corn and beans a little bit, I don't look for the rally side to really be the preferred method, at least for the next two to three weeks. So what that means, maybe a little downside pressure, uh, support around 334 corn. I still think that's an area we could potentially test along with this 950 to 963 on soybeans. Feeder cattle, Friday, down seven and a half to 70 cents. Uh, the live cattle market up anywhere from 122 and a half, and that was off the October, trading around 115, where I think many traders hope cash goes for the afternoon, versus the deferred that was down 35 in the hog market, down 15 to 60 cents. On the week, feeder cattle up 285, live cattle up 370, and the hog market down 40 cents. Cattle market, as we said, um, passing bids at 111 on the cash side, looking for 115, and we'll see if we get some late trade. Excuse me, not much activity here to this point. Some dress trade at 175. But good export sales, 25% above last week, really kind of the feature. So good demand, strong cash, gets the support of the market, but realize we're up near the upper end of the range. Some marketing warranted here. Same thing in the hog market, 58% over exports from last week. Uh, that's encouraging to see, but we've got good production numbers around. So there's reasons we're at 65, but our ability to maintain this strong export demand is really gonna be the key in these big production numbers. So uh, at $65 December, a good opportunity for producers to be doing some marketing. This has been Jim Emter, Van Onna Company, Alexandria, Minnesota Trading. Futures and options involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all producers. Past performance is not indicative of future results. This is a solicitation.